Okay, so on Monday we talked about that some of the time you can have resistors who aren't in series or in parallel, and that makes it really hard to figure out how to combine to an equivalent resistance. This normally happens when you have three resistors that are combined together, again, not in series or in parallel. So for example, I could have this delta configuration here with RA, RB, and RC, um, and we called it a delta because it could also look like a triangle like this since down here is all just connected to the same node, or just a point like this, or I could have a Y configuration like this, which could also look like this if they were drawn at angles from it. Um, and to convert between these, I can convert from a delta to a Y, this direction, or from Y to a delta if I overlay them. So basically, if I take RC from my delta, RB and RA, and they were connected between points X, Y, and Z here. I could replace those three resistors between those three connection points with instead a Y configuration, like R1, R2, and R3 going between that. So I'm gonna do this as an example um, where we're going to convert a delta into a Y. So our example of this is called a Wheatstone bridge. It's actually a fairly common way you see resistors hooked up um, when you're trying to measure slight change in resistance. And you'll talk about these in later classes like in sensing and measurement. But basically a Wheatstone bridge looks like a complex circuit to begin with, but it really isn't when we can use this delta and Y configurations. So I have a five volt voltage source here, for example, It'd be any voltage really though. And I have a resistor here a resistor here, resistor here, resistor here, and one going straight through the middle here, like this. This is R1, this is R2, this is R3, R4, and R5. Okay, so it's something that looks like this. If I look at this, I don't have anything either in series or in parallel. Remember, series means they have to have the same current, so it couldn't have branched off to another resistor from it. Parallel means they've got to go from the same voltage to the same voltage on the other side or be connected from the same node on top to the same node on bottom. And none of these resistors are either in series or in parallel with each other. But what I do have, if I look at this, I'm going to change the color of my marker, is that these three resistors, for example, R3, R4, and R5, form a delta configuration. They look like that triangle from it. And what I'm going to do is replace them with a Y configuration. So my Y is going to go between those same three points, so from here to here to here. And instead of those resistors, I'm going to have what I'm going to call R1 prime. So a little dash after that. Since I already had an R1, I don't want to confuse it with that but my Y resistors were labeled R1, R2, and R3. So I'm going to call them R1 prime, R2 prime, and R3 prime. Right here. Okay, so how do I calculate this? For R1 prime, um, I do that by multiplying my value for R3. 3 by R4, its neighboring resistors from it. So let's give these some values also. I need to know what they start with. Let's say R1 is going to start as 4 ohms. Ohms R2, and this is in my original circuit here, is 2 ohms. Now my pen's not wanting to write well on the screen now. R3 is going to be 6 ohms. R4 is 3 ohms, and R5 is also 3 ohms. Okay, so to find R1 prime, I go look in my delta to Y configuration. And it says that it multiplies by the resistors that are just next to it. That's R3 and R4 on top of me. So R3 is 6 ohms and R4 is 3 ohms. 
over our one plus, I mean, uh, my delta resistors all together. So that would be my R3 plus R4 plus R5. So R3 was 6 ohms, R4 is 3 ohms, R5 is 3 ohms. That's my denominator. So this is really, write this out in terms of that, that was R3 times R4, in my case, over R3 plus R4 plus R5. In my delta configuration, that resistor um, that is R3, labeled here, is really like RC. This was kind of like my RC value. The one that's labeled R4 here um, would be really like RB. That was the one on my left side in that diagram. So to get the R1 value from it, I multiplied RC by RB. And um, that leaves R5 was really like my RA. Okay, so that's how I got that. So what does that come out to be? R1 prime, when I plug in 6 times 3, over 6 plus 3 plus 3 gets me 1.5 ohms. Do the same thing, calculate R2 prime. Then R2 then gets multiplied by R3 times R5. So that is 6 again times 3 over 6 plus 3 plus 3. Came out to the same number as R1 prime in this case. You had different values of resistors though, that may not have been true. R3 prime is multiplied by R4 times R5. So that's 3 times 3 over 6 plus 3 plus 3. And that comes out to be 0 0.75 ohms. So now I can redraw this circuit. I'm going to use a new color for that. Let's use green. With replacing those resistors instead of R3, R4, and R5 with R1 prime, R2 prime, and R3 prime. So what will that circuit look like? Still my 5 volt source. I didn't do anything with my original R1 and R2 up here. They're the same. R2. But now I don't have R3, R4, and R5. In place of them, I have R1 prime, R2 prime, and R3 prime. So R1 prime went like this. My starting my Y. R2 prime went like that. And then R3 prime went something like that. Okay, so that's what I have now as an equivalent circuit, but using these values of resistors now. 1.5 for R1 prime, 1.5 for R2 prime and 0.75 for R3 prime. Now is anything in series or parallel? So look at that for a second and see if we can identify. Well, now any current that comes through R2 has to go through R2 prime. There's nowhere else for it to go. That was not true in my original circuit, right? If I went through R2, it could either go through R3 or R5, so they weren't in series. But now R2 and R2 prime are in series. So is R1 and R1 prime. So I can combine those in series. So R1 plus R1 prime gets me R1 was 4. R1 prime is 1.5. That gets me 5.5. And R2 plus R2 prime gets me 6 plus 1.5 or 7.5. Oh, sorry, that's not 6. That's R2. Not 6 ohms, it is 2 ohms plus 1.5. That gets me 3.5. So now that I have that, I could replace those, redrawing my circuit another time. 5 volts. In place of where I had R1 and R1 prime, I'm just going to write their equivalent, which now got me 5. 0.5 ohms, we just calculated that. Okay. And then I also have where R2 and R2 prime were. I got me the equivalent of 3. Ah, I get 3. The screen doesn't want to recognize that. 3.5 ohms. And then it's still, now those combine to meet at the same point and go through R3 prime. 
Okay, so that is my circuit now. We need to go back to it and look and see that that would be how it would look from it. Keep in mind, this is just wire up here, so it's all connected by the same point. And this is just wire here as well from it. Now, is anything in series or in parallel? Well, now I have 5.5 and my 3.5 ohm resistor in parallel. They go from the same node on top, which is, back to my purple, this color up here. This node up here to the same node on bottom down here. They have to have the same voltage drop across them. So 5.5 .5 in parallel with 3.5. Do that, I do 5.5 times 3.5 over 3.5 plus 3.5, and that gets me 2.139 ohms. So now what will my circuit look like? I replace that parallel combination with my single resistor. That is just 2.139 ohms. It went from this point up here to this point down here. Just now I didn't need two different paths for it. Still have R3 part. Went from this bottom point here to down there. So now how are those resistors related? They are in series. So I can combine them in series by adding so 2.139 plus R3 prime. Go back and look that up. Was 0.75. And that gets me 2.89 ohms. I now combine what looked like a really scary circuit with a lot of resistors, none of which were series in or in parallel with each other, into a single equivalent resistance that is 2.89 ohms. And again, that is equivalent to what my circuit was when it started, which looked like this, as a reminder. Where R1 was 4 ohms, R2 was 2 ohms, R3 was 6 ohms, R4 was 3 ohms, and this one was 3 ohms. This is my circuit, and now I've converted it into a single resistor. So that's the value of using delta to y or y to delta conversions. It may not make sense when you're doing it at first of like, how is this going to make my circuit any better if I switch from a delta to a y configuration? But I guarantee if you have three resistors anywhere in a circuit, that you identify aren't in series or in parallel. Try to see, are they a delta or a y? There should be one or the other. And convert it to the other form. And it should always then be able to simplify into some sort of series or parallel resistors then. It will always work. It's a magical trick from it. OK. OK, so um, now we need to talk about power. Power is defined to be the time rate of expending or absorbing energy. And energy is really the same thing as work. Um, so if you're using up energy, you're also doing work from it, really meaning the same thing. Power has the units of joules per second, where joules is energy. That energy per time gets us power. Um, a joule per second is also defined to be a watt. So that's our basic SI units. How we get power from electric circuits is this equation that power equals current, number I is current, times voltage. Why do we get that? Well, um, remember that voltage is defined to be the energy required to move a single charge. So that energy is the same thing as work. So I'm going to write it as W for work here. Per charge, charge is Q. It's charge here for you. And current was defined to be um, moving a single charge per time, how fast are those charges moving. So what happens when I multiply those two things together? I have dW dQ times dQ dt. My dQs cancel out, and I just get dW dt, or how much work per time. That's power. So multiplying our current times voltage will get us power. For a resistor, if I plug in V equals IR, our Ohm's law, I can write power in terms of the voltage and resistance or current and resistance. Basically, if I plug in V equals IR in place of I into my power equation, where P equals IV, but 
where I have V, I'm going to write IR. So P equals I times IR. That voltage just got replaced with IR from Ohm's law. That equals I squared R. So that's how we get this equation. The power um, dissipated by a resistor, or a resistor is going to use up energy, call that dissipating energy, is the current through that resistor squared times its resistance. Alternatively, I could have rearranged Ohm's law to say current equals voltage over resistance, right? Over resistor. So when I plug that into P equals IV, I'm going to plug that in in place of current. So P now equals V over R, write that in place of my current, times V. That just equals V squared over R. So power also equals the voltage drop over the resistor squared over R. Should all get you the same value. Um, our power really refer to that as coming from energy sources, voltage or current sources. Generally, you know one, but not both of them. Like through a resistor, if I know the voltage, then I could find the current. Or if I knew the current, I could find the voltage. Um, but you don't have both to find simultaneously because they uh, could then conflict with each other and make Ohm's law no longer true. So how does this work for a real resistor from it? Um, well, if I have, let's say, a resistor and a very simple circuit, 5 volts, and it is a 1 kilo ohm resistor, then what kind of power is that di resistor dissipating? Well, I could do it from any of my equations here. I already know the voltage drop across it is 5 volts in this case, so I could say power equals 5 squared over 1,000, and that gets me 0 0.025 watts. Or I could find the current to that resistor, I. That current has to be in my 5 volts over 1,000. This is just V over R, rearranging Ohm's law. Right, so that current comes out to be 0 0.005 amps. And then my power equals 0 0.005 squared times 1,000. That also equals 0.025 watts. Same answer as I got up here. Or I could have done, doing this as I squared times R, or I could have done the current itself, which was 0 0.005, that's I, times V, which my voltage was 5 volts. Gets me the same thing, 0 0.025 volts. So that's how you find power um, through a resistor from it. You can do it from either current or voltage. Remember, Ohm's law would tell you the other one once you know one. Okay, guys, that's it. Good luck, and um, please do practice problems from the book to make sure you're keeping up with doing these.